a Pakistani nuclear physicist and professor of physics at the Preston University who is known for his research publications in understanding the gamma ray rays burst, Mosbar effect, diffraction, and nanotechnology. Uh, he's also known for his uh, neutron science and nan nanotechnology and nuclear deterrence. Uh, the chief guest of our ceremony, Professor Dr. Anambat. Bismillah rahman rahim uh, My dear Professor Ilyas, and respected madam, and colleague uh, Hushisa, it's a pleasure to be uh, in this hall several times. Uh, materials are always very important, and my personal interest uh, uh, when I met Professor Elias uh, about 10 years ago, I was so impressed that this university was a, a management university and open university in different subjects. But to work and develop the science laboratories is a major task, which I think uh, uh, I must salute uh, uh, Professor Elias. It has been my pleasure to, to come to this hall several times. Today, uh, Professor uh, Asagri's lecture took me some 62 years back <laughs> when I was a student at uh, Birmingham and the first time after nuclear training here in Pakistan, first time used the X-ray diffraction Philips equipment. So, but the project for my uh, doctorate was uh, gamma ray diffraction. So, as uh, she has very well explained the condition of diffraction is the wavelength should be corresponding to the lattice parameter of the crystal you are investigating. So in nuclear physics we have certain gamma rays which are of the order of few keV. Usually as the question has been put that the, uh, the X-ray sources are of a few keV, 10 keV, 12 keV and we found a, at the time was the first uh, investigation a gamma ray which is a 14 keV which is just matching to the lattice constants of various crystals. So uh, this was a, a very new experiment which was given to me and Alhamdulillah it's being referred that work right up to now for the last uh, more than 50 years. Because it was the basic uh, investigation, gamma rays have a very high resolution as compared to the X-rays. And certain investigations in the Bragg law, the scattering of uh, these X-rays uh, with the atoms have certain energy loss also, but that energy loss was too small. That is, inelastic scattering of X-rays was difficult to find out by the resolution available in the X-ray diffraction, which was about uh, 10 to the power, uh, 10 keV or so. But uh, these gamma rays had million times better resolution. So small energy changes in the diffraction we could investigate and that was a, a first experimentation, experimentation of uh, Waller's uh, theory of 1923 which was uh, we verified in 1963 something 40 years afterwards so he was very happy anyway and that fundamental work is being referred even now so thank you very much for uh, taking me I, I wanted to talk about nanotechnology and its investigation and so on but this took me back to my uh, I didn't I didn't know that she was going to say and uh, explain very well the basics of the X-ray diffraction. But now as uh, the condition is that the wavelength of the um, system should be, X-ray should be, or any system should be of the order of the lattice parameters. So there were other radiations like I mentioned gamma rays and later my experience went into neutron diffraction uh, which uh, at the reactor at Pinstack I was involved in since 1966. So that was the, there are electron diffraction there. The condition, as she said, should be the wavelength of the particle. In this case, electrons and neutrons should be of the order of the same as lattice parameter. So thank you very much for taking me back to my basics. Uh, and now we come to today's of materials. <laughs> I can't say, but uh, I don't know. Um, in early times, my, I might have given a lecture at the Kaidazm University, I think, when... Thank you very much. So, so, so kind of you. So anyway, uh, today's uh, talk on the materials is a very interesting one, which has taken my last 10 years uh, actively 
in, in a new concept of uh, nanotechnology. But uh, as some of uh, the younger ones might know that the uh, word nanotechnology was the uh, first time I, occur, I, I expressed in my talk in 1995 at Pinstech. I was interested at the time in new materials at the time. And these names of smart materials, new materials were actually scientific names coming into the literature. And one of the area was these biomaterials. So at the time, as a solid state physicist, uh, uh, I tried to get into the new things. And these uh, biomaterials were very popular at the time. Your hip joints and, you know, a lot of these uh, medical applications. So while going through the literature, uh, I found there are other types of materials also. And that was the word used by, although uh, the, the father of uh, nanoscience is considered a uh, fine man who gave a lecture in 1959 at Caltech and said the, when the particle sizes become smaller, their properties from the bulk are very different. So this was the concept he gave. And the nano, actually the nano word was uh, offered, uh, occurred uh, from a Japanese in 1974. Uh, he was working on silicon transistors and uh, he was seeing the effect of silver atoms on the uh, base atoms of silicon and how small these uh, electronic effects are uh, in these transistors. So uh, the silver atoms he was using a very small size and nano was known to us as a measure of uh, one billionth of a, uh, either time or measurement. So he said, I'm using atoms, silver atoms, to see the effect of silver atoms on the silicon base. So I'm using the nano size materials. And since silicon is a technological solar cell, silicon is a technological item, it is nanotechnology. So he, in his paper, uh, for the first time, he used the word nanotechnology. Although Feynman had given the germs of this small-scale science at nanoscience, at the atomic level science, the properties are different uh, from the bulk materials of the same material. But the word actually nanotechnology was used by Japanese. So anyway, this is uh, information which I re uh, recollect from my early times. Now, later, coming up then, of course, when the technology was there and the materials were used at very small level, then the name nanomaterials came and several uh, fashionable na names of smart materials, new materials were actually being used in the literature. Now there is a, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of uh, literature on the nanoparticles of zinc oxide, silver, copper, you know, you name anything in even polymer materials the nano size materials are being used. So um, at the time, uh, you know, over the years, I was interested in nanotechnology, giving lectures in early this century. And Professor Atharaman was very keen to uh, appreciate this new technology because it had a lot of uh, industrial applications. I'll come to in a few minutes uh, of the 15 minutes I have survey over for the new people and uh, the, he then formed a na national commission under the Ministry of Science and Technology in 2005 and I was working for chairman of this uh, on a re honorary basis for five years and we distributed about 900 million rupees to five projects out of 10 we got at the time, uh, 200 million to commsets, uh, about 200 million to NIPJE for medical applications, uh, to Kaidasma University, uh, magnetic studies, to Dr. Hasnan. Uh, there was a committee formed and we investigated uh, about 10 projects and out of 10 projects, five projects were selected based on the experience of the people and the, what we could think of merit. So that is how this uh, nanotechnology started in this uh, country. But uh, my passion was to give lectures uh, here and abroad. So slowly, because of the compulsion of nanotechnology applications at the world level in industrial, all types of industries, the world also spread by its own, not from myself very much, 
but from the international literature. And when anybody wanted to go to for PhD, this was a small scale, small scale applications of the project. So nanotechnology in Pakistan also, in addition to our efforts, uh, spread and almost now every university I think has either chemistry or biology or so. So this is now uh, a nanotechnology spread in research. But what is lacking I think is uh, the industrial applications of this technology. The world is making a lot of uh, benefits from the industrial applications. And I was uh, looking up the survey recently, one to two trillion, trillion dollar industry of all nano products are available in the market world over. Trillion, you know, what to talk of million dollars, trillion dollar industry. It's a huge, whether it is the space science or it is a new revolution in medicine nano, under the name nano medicine, uh, treatment of cancer and treatment of uh, MRI and a lot of applications. You go to the literature and you will find a lot of applications of this technology. It's a sort of industrial revolution as it properly properly known as. But unfortunately in Pakistan, uh, our industry has not taken up. Although uh, in my earlier times, in 2011, uh, I, I got one contract from Canada to investigate industrial applications of nanotechnology in Pakistan and in the region. Region means uh, Sri Lanka and India. And uh, I addressed twice to the Chambers of Commerce of Sialkot because a lot of applications are in the sports industry, hockeys and lighter and stronger materials and these tennis records and even golf balls and you know. So surgical instruments, their layers with nanomaterials and so on. But uh, twice, uh, you know, 60, 70 people are sitting very big industries, but somehow they have uh, they are buying the products, the nano paste, putting into the hockeys and making lighter and selling it, but not using the talent which is available within Pakistan, on the, unfortunately. So I think our efforts uh, to our youngsters and our uh, fellow friends uh, must be on convincing this industry somehow. We have in the Atomic Energy Commission found one formula to convince the <laughs> atomic, uh, these uh, industries, that is you first do some work to save their money of their products, and then they will come up. I can cite one example, Dr. Khushid knows. Uh, we had a polymer chemist, uh, very you know, communicative and uh, good polymer uh, scientist some 30 years back at Pinstack. He went to Lahore, Atlas company, you know, the powder tire. Banate. So he happened to go there and he, he was told that this Tons of powder is lying useless because it doesn't work now. He was a researcher. He said, well, he, he guessed that there is some moisture in the... And he said, give me one kilo. He, he brought one kilo uh, powder into the, a pin stack and put a vacuum pump and removed the vapor and it worked. So since that time, <laughs> so the, the, the crux of the matter is you first do their thing this is a, a message for our uh, researchers, like you first do their thing which saves their money and then they will come into this. This is Pakistan's uh, thinking uh, for industrials, but not uh, like others in other countries and industries where they spend money to, uh, for uh, postdocs and doctorate students to give money for uh, industrial applications. Anyway, so nanotechnology happens to be uh, now very common in, in Pakistani universities, but the lacking, uh, again I repeat that we should try to uh, go into the industry so that we can earn some money. Uh, these two in, uh, industries I s s proposed to Canada, the textile industry and support industry, because they were earning money. So I thought, this is 10 years back, 15 years back. So I thought that uh, if neighboring countries compete with us, we'll suffer in our exports. And these were the two proposals which uh, we sent to Canada and they approved it and gave us some money. So anyway, the, uh, I'm now coming to uh, the, the new concept of, uh, in the f next five, six minutes, new concept of helping the nanotechnology flourish in Pakistan and all over. And this is the concept when you have an, a technology which is sort of industrial revolution you need to have properly trained people for that. 
and this is uh, to get maximum benefit of the well-trained people. So uh, this was a concept that we must have some formal degree in nanotechnology. And uh, I was emeritus uh, after my retirement in 1996 at Pinstech, but uh, uh, President University Chancellor uh, was a very visionary and he approached me in 2009 again <laughs> about your time. And uh, he said, we are interested in education of the nanotechnology. So there I proposed uh, uh, one course of BS uh, in nanotechnology and um, so that we can produce BS graduates with, who can go to research and into industry applications with well-equipped basic knowledge of practical and the theory. So fortunately I planned, um, I was able to get uh, some professors who are, my concept was retired professors, soon retired professors and some young people so that in a certain management Pinstruck was too big for management, I had some experience, but this was a new start, but you know, very uh, challenging one. So I was able to get uh, six full professors uh, for this uh, educational program of BS level, retired from Kaidasm University and from Atomic Energy Commission. So this was fortunate, and some younger PhDs and MPhils. So we designed a, a, a course of BS with the 132 credit hours with nanobiotechnology, with basic physics, quantum physics, based on nano-quantum physics, and so on. So, your former fifth year was a course, of these people were very experienced, you know, in a practical or theoretical, on that level, so that the kids get BS level pe basics, or strong basics at advanced level, mil jai. not necessarily one uh, MSc, puri physics ki ya chemistry, ki us level, ki, sixth year. Ko so, four subjects to 132 credit hours we arranged. Physics, chemistry, biology, and material science. This was the only uh, concept and only uh, BS in the whole of Pakistan and in consonance with the, some uh, advanced countries in Germany, in Australia. People were combining the multidisciplinary concept of combining two subjects, physics, chem uh, chemistry, yeah, biology, physics, some three. And only there was one university in Chicago which had four subjects at one uh, BS level. So this, is, this was a new experiment we started. We didn't know there were some uh, views that what will happen to the, the employment inside the country. But anyway, in any new sub things, when you have to venture into it, uh, otherwise the thing will never come. So I thought, well, uh, I was supported by the chancellors so and from the Pakistan Academy of Sciences, some grants. So Alhamdulillah, by now we have very good uh, well-established laboratories, theoretical, of course, faculty, six full professors were nowhere, and very few students, that means 10 to 15 we had every year. So it was just a tuitionary, uh, and the result is just uh, before ending in the next two minutes. The result is in the last 10 years, we have produced uh, 65 graduates. From 2014 was the first batch. We started the 2010 at Preston University. Uh, 2010, the admissions of this course and so on. And in, uh, in 10 years' time, we produced about 65 graduates of this type, multidisciplinary, four subjects at BS level. The, the advantage is that uh, in between, I had some MOU with China, and there are 30 students with fully funded scholarships doing PhDs. Some have done PhDs in the best laboratories of Chinese Academy of Sciences in Beijing, Nano Center. So uh, we had five years MOU first with them, and they, uh, they gave us three. Actually, the team of the scientists came and, uh, in 2012 and in the Academy of Sciences in Pakistan, and the, the president was known to me, and he came to Chunli Bai. So the director of this nano center in Beijing was invited to my institute, and I started getting something out of it. And by correspondence, uh, he agreed to give three PhDs scholarships every year, fully funded. So I was happy and the first batch which came in 2014, I sent three best students out of these 15 which passed. And for five years, every year three students were going on. 30 students are by now, and three have done PhDs, one with 19 publications during PhD, another with 16 publications, and the third one also with 16 publications in high impact factor material general. The advantage is that this base of four years is a very new concept, but uh, maybe not very popular in Pakistan. 
for the employment at, uh, as a lecturer and so on uh, in colleges. But internationally, it's very much accepted. This is the, I'm talking now as a result of the documentation which I have with me. 65 graduates, 30 in, uh, 30 in China, and in 11 other countries, fully funded scholarships. MS leading to PhD in the United States, Australia, Australia, Japan, you know, because uh, the four subjects training is not available even internationally, very common. And therefore, these students are taken. Somebody is doing cancer research, somebody is doing brain research using nanotechnology, somebody is using solar cells. So, because the variety of these biological and these four sciences are available to these BS, BS4 students. And the total amount which they have earned as scholarship is something like uh, 430 million rupees, 43 crore rupees. So I So I'm happy that uh, this our journey of 10 years is also like you uh, contributed something to Pakistan, the new technology. So my request of you people is that the industry ko kisi pakne so that this technology is useful for Pakistan also, for industrial. So if there are general things, there are a lot of things in a long time. But I would like to end it. Uh, pay my thanks to Zafar Ilyas to give me time to express to particularly young people if they have certain uh, questions and uh, I will be happy to uh, give comments, uh, whatever experience we have. It's all for young people. Thank you. So sir, thank you for, uh, again, uh, a very motivation uh, for, from you about uh, how we can uh, help the industry with our knowledge. Generally, we don't have that uh, kind of a bridge. I think that bridge is missing. So uh, uh, do you think th there is a lack of that bridge if uh, universities can develop a, a regular visit of the students of the MS and PhD to their industries like in you mentioned in Sialkot that uh, in Lahore you said about that uh, polymer material that was having a moisture in it. So because we don't have that kind of visit of our students to the different industries, textile industry and rubber industry, steel industry, a lot of other industries and in Karachi as well and in different cities. So uh, because you have been as the head of that commission of nanotechnology. So because I don't see any kind of that platform even in the universities that bring the students regularly going to the industries so that they, they can interact in the future as well they can understand the problems what the industry are facing so maybe maybe any faculty member or any student they can get an idea <coughs> okay how we can contribute because right now most of the uh, uh, most of us uh, i'm not sure about i'm not saying everybody most of us they are blank about what is happening right in the industry in pakistan what are the challenges being faced by an industry because mostly as you said the raw material is being imported uh, because once I remember you came in uh, Faisalaba Chamber of Commerce about that nanotechnology commission and they said uh, we don't need uh, to uh, take help from the university we can buy very cheap raw material from China and we can uh, go for our textile dyes and the other uh, uh, our fabric. Uh, this is a very important uh, discussion which uh, we have been doing for a long time uh, way back in uh, I think Atar Rahman uh, when he was the minister we organized uh, uh, applications of physics in industry, a conference in Karachi. So I was personally asking the industrialists, please send your technician for a week. And the, you know the answer was that, uh, you know, if he goes for a week, uh, our production will suffer. So they did not realize that the training we will get will save a lot of uh, uh, money in, in improving the products. And this concept was not तो मेरे हाल में अब ये आपका पॉइंट जो है ना एक इंटर्नशिप का बीएस लेवल पे है सिक्स वीक्स सो व्हाट वी डिड सिंस आई वाज इन्वॉल्व्ड इन दिस कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ इंडस्ट्रियल एप्लीकेशंस ऑफ नैनो टेक्नोलॉजी और सेंड माय टू स्टूडेंट्स टू सेल्कोट इंडस्ट्री फॉर सिक्स वी सिक्स वीक्स एंड दे यू नो टोल्ड देम दैट यू मेक दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ पे दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ पेस्ट एंड यू नो सरफेस मॉडिफिकेशन ऑफ दी uh, surgical instruments and one of the industry adopted this uh, coating of uh, their uh, uh, surgical instruments uh, and they, they they wrote me that this is 10 years seven eight years back they wrote me they have increased about 
13 percent of their products uh, in export industry. So by the improvement of uh, nano coating of the surgical units. But on a mass scale, you know, this is uh, this was only a small am uh, amount. But in, on a mass scale, the industry is not coming up. I heard that from Munich. Uh, this there is a uh, hockey exporting company in Salkot. They are importing the paste, nano paste, from Munich, somewhere, industry. You know, hockey, they have a plastic uh, empty. They, how do they make a hockey? It's a plastic envelope of the hockey shape, and they put this uh, resin, imported resin into it, and, you know, temperature and so on, and the hockey. They gave me one hockey, of na written as nano hockey, you know. So. Nano hockey. So I've got it about 10 years back, I think they gave me one copy. So uh, nano hockey, they are selling it from, they can make the paste material here from our chemists and so on. So unfortunately, this is, they have to be, but one thing we tried, as I said, you save their money and then uh, they will come up. So I think uh, let's continue interaction with them. The experience of British uh, industry was that uh, at the university they had a, in the syndicate one member from the uh, industry as a member. That was an old concept. In Germany there was a new concept uh, coming up uh, some uh, 15 years back. Uh, the, the research professors opened a small private company and they were interacting. They knew the, uh, uh, what uh, Steinbeis Foundation is what the name I was working uh, just literature wise and that uh, group of professors went to the uh, industry and the problem of the people for example wo ek chimneys ka problem tha wahan pe gas jab nikalti hai to that is more than that and they knew that such and such a university has the experience of doing this and so this in, in between, and that uh, is now flourishing uh, international company. So there have been different models, but in Pakistan, it's a difficult model that you go to them and save their money and then they will come. This is, this is our experience. Please. This uh, American experience is that these researchers, they leave the job after some time when they and they opened the company and it was very successful. Even in nuclear equipment, I know uh, some of the Oak Ridge people, uh, American scientists, uh, way back in 20, 25, 30 years back, the very good scientists, researchers. And then they left the job and opened their company for nuclear instruments. And they, they earned a lot of it and the companies are coming up in a big way. So I think, uh, but one thing important in application, is our experience is that unless you have a R&D experience of say 10 years, a good experience, you cannot make the product which is compatible with the international market. And our experience from the atomic energy was, we have made certain things. R&D was for materials, for example, these uh, reactor tubes of zirconium. Radiation. A lot of things. But those, those people who had experience of R&D, they produced compatible and good quality products. This concept is that you have a PhD, you have a project, you have a waste of time, you have a waste of money, you have a waste of quality. So I think first, this <coughs> paper is a good thing. First, this is our concept. I think uh, uh, we have to make sure that 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 we have to make sure Okay, it's a, uh, one section of it is okay, which you can break through. But the most good research experimental uh, researcher should be in the industry. But the fact that he will resign and then what will he do here? He will not be in the industry. So in between, some solution has to be that advisors in the industry and other professors in the industry. Uh, uh, project PhD research ke lete rahe industry se 
और ये मॉडल यूके में चल रहा था अब यूके में ज़रा कमर्शियल हो गए हैं लेकिन दिस वॉज अ वर्किंग वर्किंग प्रोफेसर वॉज इन वर्ल्ड इन द इंडस्ट्री टेकिंग द रिसर्च एंड दैट्स वन थिंग विच आई थिंक वी कैन ट्राई इट्स अप टू यू हमने तो जो थोड़ा बहुत करना था <laughs> कर कर लिया अपनी तरह से बट दे इज़ लॉट ऑफ होप दे इज़ लॉट ऑफ टैलेंट पाकिस्तान का टैलेंट तो आई हैव सी इन माई सेल्फ एक और बहुत सी चीज़ें नोबल लॉरियट्स मीटिंग्स होती है जर्मनी में कोई तीस पैंतीस नोबल लॉरियट्स इन फिजिक्स एक एक हफ्ते के लिए इकट्ठे होते हैं हर साल एक साल केमिस्ट्री और बायोलॉजी जिसमें मटीरियल साइंसेज मेडिसिन में तो उसमें नाइनटीन से वो एक हफ्ते का ये कर रहे हैं इज़ अ रेयर कोर्स उसमें पाकिस्तानी स्टूडेंट्स मैंने इंट्रोड्यूस किए थे एंड एच ई सी इज़ नाउ सपोर्टिंग सिंस टू एवरी ईयर वी आर सेंडिंग फाइव टू टेन गुड स्टूडेंट्स इन दीज फील्ड्स और बड़ा इंस्पायरिंग और वहाँ पर देखा है कि कोई सिक्सटी सेवेंटी कंट्रीज के लोग आते हैं अबाउट फाइव हंड्रेड बेस्ट स्टूडेंट्स तो पाकिस्तानी इंटरेक्शन बड़ा अच्छा है और चार पाँच साल की मेरिट के स्टूडेंट्स के बाद उन्होंने उस ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ने जर्मनी ने हमें लिखा कि हम एम ओ यू करना चाहते हैं वेरी फ्यू कंट्रीज आर फार्मल मेम्बर्स एंड पाकिस्तान नाउज ए फार्मल मैंगर मेम्बर ऑफ इट और एच ई सी सपोर्टिंग दिस फुली फंडेड तो पाकिस्तान में कहने का मतलब यह है कि यंग टैलेंट बहुत है उसको यूज़ करने का अन मेरिट इज़ एन इम्पॉर्टेंट मैटर बहुत बातें बहुत सी हैं आई वुड लाइक टू एंटर क्योंकि आपने और काम भी करने थैंक यू वेरी मच एंड चाय पे या जब भी कोई डिस्कशन है तो वी आर रेडी फिर थैंक्स वेरी मच